Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube and changing things up for today's video. And Nation, you know I love talking investing and about stocks, but what's the point if there's nothing left to invest after paying your bills? A survey by Bankrate shows six in 10 households wouldn't be able to cover a $1,000 emergency expense with their savings. The average family saves less than $100 a month, and at that rate, you'd have just $61,000 invested over 20 years. I don't know what your financial goals are, but $61,000 or about $200 a month income from that in retirement? I guess maybe if your goals are ramen noodles and government cheese. So I wanna show you seven ways to save money, seven saving tips that I'm using myself to save almost $500 a month. I'll reveal each of these hacks, how much I saved, and I guarantee these will put extra money back in your pocket. I'm also gonna be revealing three rules you can use to save even more money at the end of the video. You have three rules to follow for making your own money saving tips, so make sure you check those out. And if $500 a month doesn't seem like much, take a look at what that becomes over 20 years. At that same return on stocks, saving just $500 a month turns into almost $307,000. That's nearly twice the median 170,000 people have saved by the time they reach 60 years old. And you can do it in just two decades. Nation, this is the true path to financial freedom. It's not finding the next hot stock or, or getting that lucky lottery ticket. It's this regular savings and that investing that adds up to make you rich. Before we get started though, I wanna send one last shout out to everyone there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. So nation, towards the end of last year, I noticed our expenses were really getting out of hand. Uh, Deanna had just started working as a nurse and I was busy with the online business. So that tight schedule meant we started blowing the budget. You know, even though we were making more money, we still weren't able to reach those saving goals that we had and, and we really had to make a mindset change from can we afford this to should we afford this. And that's where I think a lot of these money saving tips are gonna come from for you. Uh, finding those little saving hacks here and there that maybe while you can afford them, cutting them out of your budget is really gonna open up and add more money in your pocket. First here is to set up automatic withdrawals and a savings plan. This is actually gonna be two ways to save money all in one because we're gonna talk about how those automatic withdrawals will help you keep your budget and then the easiest savings tool that I use. So first is you can either through your employer or, or through a bank usually have your paycheck automatically split up the second it hits your account. So first is either through your employer or through your bank, you can have your paycheck automatically split up the second it hits your bank account. And maybe you say send 10% to your investment account and savings, uh, 5% to fund money, and the rest to your account that you use to pay the bills. This makes it so much easier to budget because you've already got that money coming out automatically in your savings account and a little bit of fund money for yourself. Then if that bill paying account is gonna come up short, it's gonna force you to cut some of your spending. You see Nation, the biggest reason why a lot of people don't save is because they just don't have to. If your bills come out to match your income, then there's just no motivation to cut your spending because you're not forced to, everything's coming out just fine. The problem of course is that if you never save any money, then, then we're right back to that cup of ramen and social security in retirement. Another way to do this, and I love this as a way to trick yourself into saving is, is using the Acorns app. Now the app works on a couple of different levels here. First, you link up your credit or debit cards to the app. Whenever you use those cards, the app is gonna round up your purchase to the nearest dollar and invest the difference. For example, that $3.60 cup of coffee would be rounded up to $4, and the extra 40 cents would go into your investment account. Even better though, the app automatically invests that money across a group of low-cost funds, and you pay nothing for those funds. The app charges a dollar a month on accounts under 5,000, or just 0.25% for accounts over that amount. So I'll leave a link to the Acorns app in the video description below, so look for that. Now, a recent survey on consumer payment methods found the average American runs up $1,760 a month on credit cards and another $860 on debit. In fact, consumers preferred using credit over debit cards or any other form by two to one. That means if you're like me and you're using your credit card maybe about 30 times a month and the app rounds up to transfer an average of 36 cents each time, that's $10.80 you're saving every single month and you won't even miss it. Another money saving tip, and this one totally snuck up on us, is the cost of streaming services. So you've got all these streaming services coming out and it seems like a great idea, right? Cut the cable cords, save some money, and still get your favorite shows. The problem is you pay for one service to get some shows and then another show comes out and you have to pay for another service for that. And then you want movies, so you have to get another service for that. 
it got to where we were paying almost $26 a month for three streaming packages, a Disney Plus, Netflix, and Hulu, and not really saving anything. Now you can save money with these, but you really have to ask yourself, which one do I need and which are just keeping me vegetating in front of the TV needlessly? So because the wife and I are huge Marvel nerds, we kept that Disney Plus, but then dropped Netflix and Hulu for savings of $18.98 a month, bringing our total so far to $29.78 in monthly savings. And we've still got five more ways to save money, but I wanna throw this out to you in the nation as well. And what are your favorite money saving tips? So scroll down and tell us in the comments, what are the little things you do to save big money? Next on the list for us was making smarter budget vacation decisions. Now this one was kind of forced on us. Uh, when it was just me and Deanna, we could go to Vegas for a week or New York, didn't matter. Even when our son came along, it got a little bit more expensive, but vacations were still manageable. After adopting our daughter though last year, that's four tickets we had to buy, four mouths to feed, and it was really adding up. So we had to switch to less expensive vacation ideas like a staycation or just less trendy cities close to home. Our camping trip late last year cost just $1,500 instead of the $3,500 we spent at Disney World the year before. Now that saved us two grand or an extra $167 a month. Next year, and this is a totally unique idea, but unfollowing certain people on social media. Now you probably already have an idea of who these people are, right? Uh, they're always advertising something or showing off their new toys. You know, whether they're being sponsored to show these products off or just wanna brag, they make you feel like you need to go out and spend also. Social media is becoming the 21st century's answer to keeping up with the Joneses, and it is killing your budget. So I actually ended up unfollowing about 30 social media accounts, and it's hard to put a dollar figure savings on this because it's all those impulse purchases that you don't realize about. But I'd have to estimate that we saved at least another $25 a month on this one alone. This next savings tip is probably my favorite because it's not only gonna save you money, it's also gonna save your marriage not going to the movies for date night. I never liked movies for dates when I was single either. Uh, I mean, how much sense does it make if all you can do is sit there silently for two hours unless you're doing something else? Even married though, it's just too easy to go out to a movie and call that a date night. But is that really keeping your relationship fresh? You know, the average movie ticket hit a record last year at $9.26 each and, and add the $13 for concessions, it was costing us about $31.52 twice a month to sit in a dark room with a bunch of strangers. And so just cutting that out and actually doing something where we could talk saved us an extra $63.04 a month. This next money saving tip is one of the biggest, taking my lunch to work instead of eating out. This is one you hear about all the time, but it's just so easy to go out for lunch and it costs so much money. I started working out of the office earlier this year and some weeks would go out for lunch every single day. And because I couldn't get my lazy ass out of bed early enough to pack a lunch, I was spending upwards of $11 a day every day of the week to eat out. What's worse though is that the Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates eating out is actually giving, getting even more expensive. The cost to eat out is increasing by about 3% a year, while grocery prices are only increasing by about a percent a year. According to the Wellio app, it costs about $4 a meal to bag your lunch, so cutting back to eating out just once a week saved us $28 a week, or $121 a month. Now this next hack before those three rules to saving more money is related to this last one. No bottled water or beverages outside the house. This is another one of those expenses that really sneaks up on you. you know, I was buying one cup of coffee in the morning and a juice at the gym three times a week and it was costing almost a hundred dollars a month. Instead, now I fill up a 32 ounce thermos of coffee for work and take a 16 ounce sports bottle of juice to the gym. This costs just 27 cents a cup for home brewed coffee versus that 325 I was spending at Starbucks, including the tip, and saving $14.90 a week. You know, buying a gallon of juice for $4.58 lasts me two weeks and saves $4.26 a week for a total of $83 a month. That's almost $500 saved and just from those seven money saving tips. Now I wanna reveal three rules you can use to save even more money and to create though your own rules to save money. First is to focus on the big expenses like housing, transportation, and food. You know, the Department of Labor's Consumer Expenditure Survey shows more than half of our spending, that's 52%, and an average of $29,000 a year goes to just these three areas. So looking for ways to cut just from these three, housing, transportation, and food, where you're really gonna add up your savings. You can also use these money-saving ideas with a savings goal to get the most out of each. This can be as simple as just trying to save $10 more each month. If the increase in savings is so small, it's gonna be easier to reach, but that's gonna give you that momentum to be saving hundreds more each year. Another trick here, and I love these, is doing one month spending challenges. There are a couple of ways you can run these, and they work so well. The traditional way is just try cutting your spending to the bone for a month, but I like another strategy better. 
Now, my strategy is I cut out one thing, just one thing for the entire month. So maybe it's eating out or, or we cancel our streaming services for a month. It's only a month, so it's super easy to make it through, eh? but you're gonna be surprised at how many expenses you realize you really don't miss. And we've had a few regular expenses that after that month of spending challenge, we never went back to spending as much as we did on them. Look for that link to the Acorn Savings app in the description below and click on the video to the right for the 10 ideas to make money from home. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.